Hello everyone, this is Rafael, and today I want to explain you what's new on Aruco version 306. Okay, let's start. Uh, the main difference here are two. First, uh, we have added uh, the feature to work with enclosed marker. What is an enclosed marker? Well, we had a video, a previous video, talking about this. This over here is what I call an enclosed marker because the corner are like enclosed, okay? Uh, there was a discussion in, a, in another video about which is uh, the best marker, using this corner or, or using this corner. I came to the conclusion that there was no difference, but uh, there are other people uh, showing in videos that uh, they added the, uh, the difference is there, so they prefer this type of marker. So, okay, I'm just trying to implement that. Well, the thing is that it's a bit more difficult to have a reliable detection in enclosed uh, markers like those. Why? Mainly because uh, these corners actually uh, makes it difficult to detect the rectangle inside with the method we are using. So I have to work a bit on how to uh, break down uh, these elements so that I could detect the, the marker. So I want to show you how to use it. Uh, the second feature we have uh, added to the library is the ability to save the configuration of your marker detector to a file to be loaded uh, when you want it. So the idea is that uh, sometimes, depending on what your application um, or your video or your uh, environment, you may need a set of parameters to uh, make uh, to, to have a proper detection. So the thing is that. Uh, uh, you, uh, from now, from this version, you will use Aruco test uh, utility to set all the parameters for your specific uh, video configuration, okay? Like say, okay, I want this threshold, I want this. So then once it, everything is uh, properly set up, you will save this to a configuration file and then the Merkle detection, the Merkle detector will, uh, could be created using this configuration file, okay? So let's start to see how it works. Uh, I'm gonna run uh, a Ruko test to show what is new here. Well, as usual, we have here the dress hole uh, image and this is the input image. Uh, here you will see it's very small here because we are running uh, a very small resolution camera, but uh, right now uh, it says you can press H for further help and the things you can do with a Ruko test are all of these. Uh, and the most important one here is that uh, now if you press M, you will get this uh, extra menu here with all the parameters to you can configure your market detector, okay? So basically here, right now, uh, you can change the dictionary you want to use. It is, uh, and here you will see uh, the value of the parameters you are configuring up here. So at the beginning, okay, dictionary zero is now all dix. It means that it will look for all possible dictionaries that we have in the database. But if you know which is your dictionary, it's better to use it. In this, in our case, is Aruco MIP 36H12, which is the one I recommended. Uh, okay, the next parameter you have here is detection mode. We have talked in another video about that. Uh, by default, I'm using the uh, detection mode DM normal, which is the the, the, the most um, reliable one in most of the cases. And uh, this is the result of this method. Okay, it's using uh, uh, an adaptive uh, uh, threshold. Okay, but it's a bit slower. Although now at this resolution we have uh, around 450 frames per, per second, which is not bad. And however, you could change, and this is the global rest holding, which is a bit faster, 600 frames per second, and it also works very well. And this one, the final one, is the adaptive one. It's used for video and automatically will resize the working image according to the input of the previous information. So this is a bit faster. Okay, so let's go again to the detection mode, the normal one. Okay, 
And now let's talk about the corner mode. This is another feature we have added in, the, in this version. Okay, when you want to detect corners and you want to refine the position of the corner, this is a very uh, sensible, sensitive thing. You know, some people want OpenCV, some other prefer to use the all line method, and some people, in some cases, don't want to use any type of refinement. So now you have the corner mode, okay? You can use zero, which is corner subpix, as you see here. So it's using uh, the subpixel refinement, okay? Then you have corner lines. What's the idea about, uh, about corner lines? Well, you see here in the detection, we have detected all these points in the in the square. So lines does the following. It finds, uh, it takes all the points from this to here, all these border points, and creates uh, and estimates which is the line. It does the same with this, this, and this. So we have the mathematical uh, equation of the line, and then we mathematically find the intersection. The good thing about that is that it's very robust to noise because we are taking a lot of points. Not, uh, it's not like a uh, corner of peaks. That is very good if the lighting conditions are, are perfect, like we have here. But if we have some problem with lining, uh, then this uh, method can be very good. And the final one is non, in which I do no optimization at all about the, uh, the corner refinement. I just take the input from the, corn, from the contour detector. Okay, so I will leave this one. Then these parameters, as you know, is to automate to, to the resize the input image here, okay? Uh, if you know the size of your marker, you can set this parameter to speed up the computation. Now we are running at 800 frames per second, which is very fast. But there is one thing here. If you plan to use corner lines, okay, you uh, the, the system will automatically change the input size because in order to do the corner lines, also the corner uh, known method, these two methods, requires the original input image. So uh, this uh, mean marker size will only be useful or available when you are running a corner sucks picks corner mode. Okay, you see? Okay, the rest hold. This is related with so let's take this out. This is related with the amount of noise or the amount of light in your image. If you the lighting is okay, okay, you put uh, high values between, let's say, 6 and 12, and detection is going to be correct. But if you're lining, uh, you have a very poor light in your environment, then you may need to reduce this value to get detection, okay? So this is a parameter you may need to adjust. Well, error rate, we have talked some, uh, at some point about that, is uh, the ability to correct errors in the detection. And here's the new feature, okay, enclosed marker. As you have seen in this video, we have been able to detect the, the marker, even if they are enclosed. But sometimes it's not so easy. The big problem here is that uh, you can see here, right now, there is uh, at least one pixel separating this marker from this uh, external enclosing square. But in some situations that happen. So then you cannot detect properly the marker. So what do you do? Well, if you enable enclosed, it will try to break down these, uh, these um, elements, okay? And it may work a bit better. The thing is that, to tell you the truth, working with enclosed markers usually leads to uh, worse performance, okay? Oh, I mean, no worse performance, sorry. It uh, detects uh, the markers less times, okay? The detection rate is not so good. Let's see an example here. This is a typical example, okay? And look, you see, detection is not very nice because sometimes these I'm having trouble with the speed. Okay, no, it's okay. Uh, you see, there is at least one pixel that uh, is connecting one marker to the other, and the detection is not correct. So, if you go nearer, then 
sometimes you see in those markers that are not visible that this one this is because something like this is happening at least one pixel is being connected to another marker I try to make this work better but uh, this is not as good as uh, the not closed marker however sorry Uh, another possibility to make this work is to use detect mode 1 and enclose markers. Wow! For this case I develop another method and it seems that works a bit better. I'm not sure. It's something you will have to check. Okay? It seems there is another process taking my CPU. Okay. Uh, so the thing is that uh, you have to try, you have to play, and you have to decide which is the best, uh, the best configuration for, for your application. So once you decide that, the only thing you have to do is you press F, okay? I have pressed F, okay? And it has saved a file here, which is Aruko config. You see, Aruko config file, and this file, if you take a look at it, it now has all the parameters that uh, you need for for uh, running the exact same uh, detection that you were running in the program. So the only thing you now have to do is uh, if you go to market detector, you have function here for producing this. It's not cleaner. If you go to market detector, you will see load params from file. The only thing you have to do is to give the the, the, the the path to this file and now the marker will work just as it did in your program. Well, I hope, well, I hope it had been helpful and it will make your detection better and easier. Thank you very much.